going to start off correct. All right, well, welcome everyone. Um, we're off the record. I just want to introduce myself again, Michael Newmark, and I'll try to speak slower. Uh, we are live streaming on YouTube, just so you know. And uh, we're here with the for the public hearing session in the uh, Wisconsin Public Service Corporation rate case. So here to take your opinion, opinion of customers and members of the public. Uh, we had the afternoon session. We had uh, four, four comments, I believe. Uh, there's also 40 comments submitted online, so you know that. And we are taking comments both here today and also uh, we'll continue to take comments online and we'll receive comments by U.S. mail up until November 3rd. Um, so we did have an earlier public session uh, in uh, last month or two, um, the end of September, we did a public session on Zoom. Uh, we had the party hearing session a few weeks ago. And what we're doing is we're creating the record in the case. That's what we're um, having all these hearings for. Uh, the record is the documents uh, and testimony that uh, we receive and the commissioners will review before they make a decision on the case. And they'll do that, they'll meet an open meeting. They'll do that and vote on the issues in the case. Uh, and once they've decided that an order will issue from the commission, a, writ a written order will we'll issue there. So uh, kind of our basic process. And um, what we're here to do tonight then is to take your comments. Uh, we can do that. You can either, I see there's a few people who have an appearance slip uh, in their laps right now, but if you do wish, wish to speak and you don't have an appearance slip, get one from the back of the room there. And uh, if you wanna speak, fill out the top and then check the yes box that you wish to speak, or actually it says speak now. And you check yes. Otherwise you can write your comment on the form or you can scan the QR code and write a comment directly on our website. So uh, just a couple of ground rules for making a comment. I'll call your name based on the uh, documents as the, the appearance slips I received. Come up to the chair here. I'll swear you in, give your name and give us your comment. So your opinion on the case. I uh, just want to hear what you think. Uh, so that's kind of the basics. Um, and I did, do want to note that Commissioner Hebner is here, uh, one of the commissioners, one of three that uh, decide the case. So he, he's in, in attendance today. Um, so I think we can get started. Uh, unfortunately, though, there are no appearance slips uh, yet uh, received for people who wish to speak. So we'll, um, I can pause the, uh, the live stream. We can wait a few minutes and see if anyone does decide to speak. Oh, wait, we have one entry here. One lucky participant. Are you going to read the comments from this afternoon? No. Oh. No. Yes. What, we, what we do is we, we record the comments uh, through the court transcriptionist. So she's recording everything you say, like you're in court. And then we'll, we create a transcript of the hearing, which is one of the documents we give to the commissioners. Okay. So everything's transcribed. That's the official transcript for the day. But we don't have the comments available to review right now. Um, the, the live stream that was on YouTube, there's a recording on our YouTube channel from this afternoon that should be already available. So you can always, you can go back and, and review the recording. All right, so we have uh, Andy O, our first contestant here. <laughs> Uh, it, uh, uh, just the letter O. Yeah, would you like to make a comment? Oh, you bet I will. Okay, come on up. Come on up, and I'll swear you in. Under oath? Yes, you'll be under oath. Yeah, see? It's no, no. Okay. Navy veteran. Okay. Any veterans in here? Okay, yes. sir. I'm going to swear you in. Right. Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm? Tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Yep. All right. Give us your name and your statement. My name's Andy O. And I'm going to read you guys something that's very, very important. Okay? Mm -hmm. Everything that is expected from an ordinary weapon is expected from a silent weapon by its creators, but only as a manner of functioning. It shoots situations instead of bullets propelled by data processing instead of chemical reaction and explosion. 
originating from bits of data instead of grains of gunpowder, from a computer instead of a gun, operated by a computer programmer instead of a marksman, under the orders of a banking magnet instead of a military general. It makes no obvious explosive noises, causes no obvious physical or mental injuries, and does not obviously interfere with anyone's daily social life. Yet it makes an unmistakable noise, causes unmistakable physical and mental damage, and unmistakably interferes with the daily social life, i.e. unmistakable to the trained observer, one who knows what to look for. The, pub the public cannot comprehend this weapon and therefore cannot believe that they are being attacked and subdued by a weapon. The public might instinctively feel that something is wrong, but that is because of the technical nature of the silent weapon. They cannot express their feelings in a rational way or handle their problem with intelligence. Therefore, they do not know how to cry for help, and they do not know how to associate with others to defend themselves against it. When a silent weapon is applied gradually, the public adjusts or adapts to its presence and learns to tolerate its encroachment on their lives until the pressure psychological via economic becomes too great they crack up therefore the silent weapon is a type of biological warfare it attacks the vitality the options the mobility of the individual of a society by knowing understanding manipulating and attacking their sources of natural and social energy and their physical mental and emotional strengths and weaknesses Economic shock testing. Economic engineers achieve the same result in studying the behavior of an economy and consumer public by carefully selecting a staple commodity such as beef, coffee, gasoline, or sugar, and then causing a sudden change or shock in its price or availability, thus kicking everybody's budget and buying habits out of shape. They then observe the shock wave which results by monitoring the changes in advertising prices and sales of that and other commodities. And you guys wanna raise the rates. What are you gonna do when there's no more diesel fuel? How do you guys generate electricity? How much do you wanna raise the rates? Anybody in here know the answers to this? 14% or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's unbelievable. Kind of coincidence with uh, our leader, dictator in chief, saying that he's going to attack the fees of companies, place taxes on big oil companies. Did he mention he's going to put a tax on Saudi Arabia? Any of those? No, our own. <laughs> Do you guys accept any grants from the government with the Green New Deal? Does anybody have the answers to that? Did you accept any money to put any more electrical in? Do you buy any electricity from Kakana? Because I know they sell it. Anybody want a copy of this so you know exactly what's going on in this nation? Because I took an oath to protect you people. That oath didn't have an expiration date. I've had two death threats already, but they saw me coming. They knew that they couldn't get away with it. And here you guys are doing it economically by messing with everybody's pocketbook. None of this is a coincidence that it's happening at this time. Diesel fuel is short. Railroads are in a quandary right now, not, not knowing what they're gonna do. What happens when that shuts down? Where are we gonna get our oil? I worked in the North Dakota oil fields for four years. I saw what was going on. Where are we gonna get it from? The wind, solar? Big push for electric cars. Our governor's using money on trolley and then charging stations. They're already doing it. They lied their way into it. 
Now's the time to stand up and, and do what you got to do. I'll take them on if I have to. Pretty sure after this, I'll get another death threat. Thanks for your comment. Okay, we have Kari Osaban. Right? Oh, thanks. Sweet. Right hand, do you swear or affirm? Tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Yes. Okay. Go so ahead. I know it. Um, well, I I'm not, I don't have a lot of fancy words. I'm a senior citizen. And last spring, my budget bill went up quite a bit, about $50. So we called my mother and I lived together, and I called the uh, electric company, and they said to me, well, we used the computer logarithm and decided to raise your rate. Um, so I said to them, well, it's quite a bit more. Is there any way that I can appeal this? Is there any committee that I can talk to about this? No, the logarithm is the final decider. The computer decides and whatever it is, that's what you have to live with. Now that's the first rate increase that we received this year. And now you're asking for a second rate increase. And I did say to them, you know, I have new windows, I have insulation, we have a new air conditioner. It doesn't matter because we've decided to raise the rates. So your situation, it's not your fault. That was very nice to hear them say, but the reality is there's nothing you can do about it. It's the computer, it's the decision-making process, and you are just one of, you know, you're getting the rate that everybody else who uses what you use gets. So this to me seems unfair because we know there's going to be a recession next year and everyone seems to want more money. And uh, you're just one, I'm, I don't think you're, I don't think it's personal. I just think you're just another person wanting money during a tough time for people. And perhaps we should think about the individuals, the fact that the individuals have to pay more than the corporations because there's two different rates. Um, and maybe we should also think about the fact that people have already had a rate increase and maybe we should wait until after we know what's going to happen with the recession before we consider another rate increase. Thank you for listening to me, that's all. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, Patricia Ball. <clears throat> <clears throat> Use your right hand, you swear or affirm the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Go ahead. Um, I live, I also, as she said, I also live in a home where there are two seniors. Uh, we're both on fixed income. We don't have huge pensions. We have no pension. Um, so, you know, we, Social Security, that's our, and, you know, people say, well, you know, you're going to get an increase. Well, you get an increase in Social Security, but also the amount that they take out for Medicare, which you are forced to have, um, also increases. So you really don't get, you know, much of an increase with Social Security. Um, as this other woman said, we've already gotten an increase. Um, I moved into the home in 2018. And at that point, there was a program where if you didn't um, uh, use a lot of electricity during the peak hours, you got a discount. Well, I got a letter last year saying we're discontinuing that. You're not going to get that anymore. So that was an increase because we're no longer getting that discount. And also, you know, we've gotten another increase and now 14%. That's incredible. You know, who can afford 14%? You know, I don't care if you're on Social Security or if you're making minimum wage or whatever, who can afford an increase of 14% on top of what we're already, you know, the increase we've already gotten. Um, and also the service has not gotten any better. Um, in the last three months, we've lost electricity three times. 
Um, it's just really strange. Once each month, we lose electricity and it's out for hours. One time it was out for 18 hours. And when you call and say, you know, when you know why, the answer was, and it's, you know, it's an automated phone and they say, you know, the reason is unknown. But yet we're going for hours without electricity. Um, so it's just interesting that it's Wisconsin public service, but the service really isn't that great. And, um, you know, it's really hard with, with everything, all the prices of everything going up. Um, and we, you know, how can we afford to pay another 14%? And we don't use a lot, you know, it's like we, we um, keep our thermostat during the winter, we keep it low. For us, it's low, for me, it's low, it's 71 degrees. For me, that's low. Um, and during the summer, we set it at like 72 degrees. So we're not, we're not at 65 or 60 degrees. So, and we have a lot of trees on our property. So we're not using an excess amount of electricity, but yet our bills every month are 200, $225 and now it's gonna go up 14%. We can't afford it. And we're already on such a strict budget. Um, we don't go out to a lot of restaurants. We don't go out to a lot of movies. We don't go out to a lot of entertaining places. Um, we pretty well, you know, stay home a lot. Um, I have a garden, so I'm able to grow food, but yet, you know, the prices of food is incredible how much it has gone up, you know, I'm not even gonna go through the whole list of it, how much it's gone up. But again, we don't have a lot of luxurious or extravagant food, it's the basics. And so we just can't afford 14% and we don't understand how it can be raised 14% um, so quickly. And it's just something that, you know, again, as seeing as we really can't afford. I just had a quick question for yes. you. You said that you're using time of use rates where it's um, lower during uh, off peak hours and rate goes up during peak hours. And you said that was discontinued. Yes. So I would encourage you to talk to the utility about that because I think, I think that program does still exist and maybe there's just some confusion. Mm -hmm. I didn't, we just, we just got a letter, you know, last year we got a letter saying, you know, this, this has been discontinued and, you know, you're not any longer going to get that discount. Okay, well, I'd encourage you to talk to the utility. So in the other room, there's some representatives and maybe they can clear that up face-to-face. -face. Okay. Right. I would do that, yeah. All right, great, thanks for coming. Mm -hmm. Okay, Debbie Poradek. Poradek. Uh, you're the only one to complain so far. <laughs> I'm usually pretty bad about <laughs> pronouncing names, unfortunately. Have a seat, please. Raise your right hand, you swear or firm, tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do. Talk. It's your comment. It's, it's... Hi, I'm Debbie Parodic. I'm a resident in Ashwabanon. For the record, they did discontinue that, that time of use. They came and put the equipment in, but I had to pay someone to remove it afterwards. That was like two summers ago. Yes. So, I'm a little bit, um, I thought this was gonna be more informational, this hearing, but I do have questions. And the only reason I know about this is because I happened to see a news blip. I'm one of these people that does e-bills, and so I don't really ever get a paper copy anymore. So I was not notified of this increase or your YouTube, any other, other um, anyway, not letting the people know. And I, so I'm canceling e -bill. You know, you guys can send me paper bill each month, and I'll get the notifications again. But I have questions. Number one, so this is a new increase on top of the 15%, because you know what? I want to know, last winter, our bills went up. Quite a bit. I think they went up at least another 5% last winter because I know I'm, I think it was this year I've not had a bill under $100. Previous summers in that I would have had one maybe 98 reasonable. So I mean, so this is like probably going to be the third increase in a row. What are you doing to cut? I wanted to know and I want to ask somebody what are you doing to cut costs? People at We Energies, are they getting? I didn't get a very big raise when I was still working. I just retired in July and I had my budget figured out that with the bills they are you know, a little bit here and there, it should be fine without pulling social security. What are people, what, what is We Energy doing to cut costs? Everyone, all of us, all the middle income people or anybody out there like me and people in this room are cutting back. I'm looking at doing 64 degrees in my house this winter. 
which I shouldn't have to. I know people we energy, they make a nice salary, they get nice benefits. I'm sure they got nice big increases this year. I mean, and why the 14%? I mean, do you still, I mean, like they mentioned, I haven't seen any improvements in any of our lines. This, this summer we had, the first outage I had was in Ashwaubenon, they're all underground, <coughs> underground lines. The reason we had that outage in the summer is because there was a transformer that malfunctioned over on Belp Avenue. And it took out the whole west side of Green Bay. What, okay, so you're doing this increase, what are we gonna get out of it besides getting to keep our lights on? I mean, what are you doing to cut, you know, what are you doing, what are you doing to cut costs before you raise our rates? I'm asking that of the school board, I'm asking that of everybody that's trying to pull this because we can't we can't take anymore. I mean, they want to increase my property tax bill because of the schools. They want more money. You want more money monthly, which I don't have. Grocery stores are wanting more money. And then why aren't you hitting the big businesses? They've already knocked it to us once. Why are you just knocking it to the residentials and the small business? What's going to happen when you apply these increases to rental apartments? Are they going to up the rates for all the renters and throw housing out of whack again? I mean, I guess I'm disappointed because I'm not getting in any information here. And if there was other publications that told me what was going on, I missed them because I didn't get your paper um, notifications each month. So if there is, where can I get my answers? And if I have additional complaints, who can I go to? Like the gentleman that left, I agree with him. Is I don't, the concept I agree with, but I would like to know who can I go to that maybe, except for some nonprofit group that's trying to stand up for us, the CUB, who else can we go to? Do I have to go to Governor Evers or do I have to go to someone at the state level to please do something? Yeah, the commission staff is available to hear complaints and questions and the utility is also available. And where can I get that in address and information? The other room right there. Okay, yeah. right there. Are they here tonight? That's, yes. If we have a comment? Yes. Yeah, you can okay. talk. Yeah, did you were you here no, before? Go over there and that's yeah, yeah. hang off the record. So we can't have people talking like this because she won't know who's talking. But yeah, they're right across the hall in the other room. There's representatives from the utility and from commission staff. So if you have specific questions about your bill or you want to ask questions about the rate case, they can help you with that. Uh, we also have commission staff in the back who worked on the case and they can help you with specific questions about the staff's audit. Um, so utility came in with a certain request and, and the commission staff <clears throat> took time to audit those numbers and see if they're accurate or what, are, what other reductions or changes needed to be made to make it reasonable. So they can answer questions about what they did as well. So there are, there are resources here available for you to get your answers. Uh, but, uh, but here right now, we just wanted to get your opinion. Sure. So at this point, if you want to get answers to your questions, I encourage you to do that. All right. Okay, so let's just back on the record. Did you want to add anything else? To no, that was it. Okay, all right, great, thanks. Okay, so I don't have any more appearance slips. Does anyone else wish to speak? Anyone else? Uh, see the appearance slip, pick that up from the back if you wanted to speak, fill that out. Anybody else? No? All right, well, let's recess for about 10 minutes, see if anyone changed their mind. Just give me an appearance slip and we can take your comments. So be back with that clock's not right. So be back around 6.30, 6.35, and we'll try again, see if anyone else, anyone else wants to comment today.
The microphone comes in handy when I need to get your attention. Now we can be off the record. All right, everyone. So let me gather you again to the hearing. Um, we have one um, another person who want, wants to comment, so I want to give them attention. Any others back there? One more coming. One more coming. Okay. Well, we can get started. Okay. So I think we're back on. All right. So at this time, let's call Kelly McHugh. There you go. You waited patiently. Thank you. Have a seat. Well, you know the drill. I'll swear, yes. you swear you in. Yes. Do you swear or affirm? Tell the truth, the whole truth, talk about the truth. Yes. Okay, go ahead. Well, my main comment is 14% is a very large increase. Like most of the people in here, they said they were on fixed income, social security. I'm single. I'm working three jobs. Rate increases hurt everybody all around. Um, it'd be nice if the state helped out and stopped. These rate increases every year, we seem to be getting them 3%, 5%, now 14. Where's the money going to? WPS is a very big, big profitable company. And in return, we're getting hit for it. I don't think it's fair. I really wish the state, I mean, there's been times where judges have put injunctions on it and WPS is like, we're still gonna raise our rates. Hopefully this meeting will do some good. You know, we've come here as a group saying, we're not for it. We have concerns too. Probably the worst year ever. It sounds like WPS is just getting on the bandwagon to do a rate increase because everything else is inflating. So WPS is like, oh, what the heck? But we're all being stretched to our limits, our dollars, our house, you know, everything. I just hope that this meeting brings some good. I hope that the state will step in and say enough is enough. You know, because where is it going to stop? Like some of the people said, 14% this year, another 5%, another 2%. You know, we're all trying to make it work. So thank you for your time. All right. Well, thanks for coming. Uh, Linda Mendez. Lillian. Lil yeah, Lillian, sorry. I, I could have read that better. You're right. Three hours. <laughs> yes. My mother's name. So. <laughs> Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm? Tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Sure. Go ahead. <laughs> Pretty much, I echo what I'm sorry. Else. Can you move the microphone or come closer? Closer, yeah. yeah. Pretty much, I echo what everyone else has said. Um, the timing of this is very suspect. Um, it's incredible that we just came out of a lockdown with COVID, where everybody has been really traumatized by it and been hit left and right. And we're just coming back out of that. Um, and we're trying to make sense of what's going on. And to continue to be um, put in a position where another wave of, you know, a level of um, afflictions in essence being applied to everyone here and everyone in this, in this state. Um, the economy is not great as everybody know the inflation rate is incredible um, we've not seen this inflation inflation rate uh, this high since the time of carter uh, president carter which our current president seems to be echoing um, and the fact that you know as stated before we were hit with increases throughout the last several years and usually they're smaller increments. They were like, what, 2%, maybe 3%, maybe 4%. And all of a sudden to get a 14.7% hike all at once makes no sense logically and economically for a lot of us. This thing is going to really impoverish us. Um, and the fact that you know the companies are only getting a 7%, requirement for an increase and we as residents you know as the average joe are being asked to put 14.7 that is clearly not fair um and that just seems to be really not justified and you know we understand that the current administration the president biden 
is really anti diesel and fossil fuels and oil and they're really pushing everybody and mandating the companies to in essence change their means and ways of conducting business and putting and applying all sorts of pressures onto utility companies to switch from fossil fuels to solar to wind um, those things take time but our current administration doesn't seem to care about the fact that things should be done incrementally. So to just simply put and just shut the switch off on us, just to accommodate the current administration policy um, and just add more weight on people's back and breaking them economically. You know, once you break our backs, who are you gonna go for afterwards? You know, once there is no more to give, where are you going to get the money from? So we need to work and live together harmoniously. This can't be a completely, you know, squeeze everything out of the average Joe to see what you can get. I mean, sooner or later, there's nothing more to squeeze out of us. So we need to have common sense and we need to look at things in terms of progress, you know, in terms of implementing plans, you need to look at it more intelligently, logically, if not common sense, you know, you can't just switch something off and think that you're going to have all the other sources provide everything you need. It's not working. We've already seen that. We've seen that in California. We've seen that in New York City. I'm originally from New York City and the horrors that I hear about what's going on there breaks my heart. But I know what happens in the extreme East and West ends up happening here in the Midwest. So we need to do something better than this. This is not fair. This is not right. I believe in a God that overall sees all this, knows all of this, and one day will cast himself and provide justice for us. And that's the hope. So again, um, the senior citizens are squeezed. The single moms are squeezed. Um, all of us are being squeezed. I don't even know what my property taxes are gonna be like. You know, the price of our home, all of a sudden the value has increased and doubled. But wait a minute, you know, I didn't pay that much when I, I mean, on the one side it's nice, on the other side it's not. Because I'm gonna have a property tax bill that I have no clue whether or not I'm gonna be able to make it. So sooner or later, we're going to see homes being lost in foreclosures because we can't keep up. So please use, at the very least, common sense. You know, by profession, I'm in that industry of design and architectural, and I know what this is all about. You know, it's not fair that in order to create change, you try to force it on everybody all at once. It takes time. You build a building, you don't build it just in one day like this. It takes time to draw and draft those drawings, have the engineers, all the professionals, all the code advisors, everybody at the table looking at the project and approving it, and then building. And even in the building process, it takes about a year to two, possibly depending upon the project. So you can't do this thing to us overnight. So I'm asking you to wisely consider what we are asking. Great, thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> it's you, isn't it? <laughs> Come on up and give us your name when you get here. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, you're, you're standing up right now. <laughs> Uh, all right, let me swear in. Yeah. Do you swear or affirm, tell the truth, the whole truth, not the truth? I do. All right, give us your name and your comment. Uh, I'm Eric Weinberger. Um, Just spell your last name. W-I-M-B-E-R-G-E-R. -E okay, perfect, thanks. Um, I'm an attorney, and they say that uh, if you write poorly, it's a sign of intelligence. So I, I actually write poorly so I can get smarter. <laughs> so a connection. It sounds like an attorney. Um, <laughs> I'm also I'm a state senator for the 30th district in Green Bay here. You're sitting in my district right now. Um, so I, I 
kind of be allowed me to at least say something to y'all, or at least testify about my opinion. Go ahead. Um, the it's just a lot of attention on it. Numbers better shake out meaningfully. Costs better, costs better uh, match what the what the demand is. Uh, utilities are given a, a, a monopoly on purpose because in the, in the olden days, there used to be wires everywhere, pipes everywhere. It's like a nest, and then you know once you once you try to fix something, you damage the other guy's wires. So in exchange for uh, order uh, mono the monopoly was was sort of given to utilities that's the nature of it uh, but then there's a the thing imposed on the monopoly which is you know you got to do things for the public good in a sense so if there's gamesmanship or whatnot then it brings attention um, and uh, i hope it i hope it works out i'll be looking at it um, situations like this bring spotlights on things such as community solar other projects that uh, can be alternatives uh, to kind of ease the ease the strain on on the public and their and their costs. Uh, so that's I guess my my comment is that uh, uh, for now trust that the costs are the are the reason, and we'll be looking at it. All right. Thanks very much. <coughs> that's all the appearance slips I have. Does anyone else wish to make a comment? No. All right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry. I can't. We, we can't uh, take comments from the audience. You like to add to your comment? I like. To, I forgot what comment. I could be wrong. My name's Debbie Pradic. Uh, my name's Debbie Pradic again. In the information that was sent out this week, you, you were the statement was made. I thought that even with this increase, that with this increase. We was not, we energies in this area were paying less for utilities than what other areas pay, and then in Wisconsin, that in Wisconsin we pay less for utilities than what some other states pay. Well, for the record, we make less money in Wisconsin. That's just the bottom line. The way to, I mean, you can compare us to other states, but I think if you'd go back and compare apples to apples, not apples to oranges, you would see that we aren't getting the lowest rates. That's that's my opinion. Thank you. Okay. All right. So with that, we're adjourned. Thanks very much, everyone, for participating, coming out today to for, for speaking and listening. I really appreciate it. And uh, we will <coughs> adjourn now and submit this transcript to the commission for it'll use it as part of its decision-making process. So thank you all. Have a good night.